So a conductor is a really neat thing because electrons can move freely within it. Of course, the protons can't move because they're trapped inside the nucleus, but the electrons can move freely, and an electron going this way is equivalent, functionally, to a proton going that way, because it has opposite charge. If you've got negative charge going this way, that's exactly the same thing as positive going that way, except in certain circumstances like with magnetic fields, but we're not gonna talk about that yet, but we'll be there soon. Conductors, but today we're gonna talk about conductors in equilibrium. And that means that we're talking about electrostatics. Which means, yeah, I mean, charges are going to be moving, but uh, we're calling statics as, as in not moving. What I mean is that uh, if conductor is in equilibrium, then the charges are not inclined to move. The charges in that conductor are happy being right where they are. And there are four things that happen to a conductor when it's in equilibrium. I'm gonna use for this, um, I'm going to use the convention that red is positive. This is a common DC convention and black will be negative. And if I want to be super fancy, I guess I could just write, yeah, positive and negative. And we'll try to get used to that convention so that you can know. Generally, if you open up some piece of electronics, they're going to be using that convention, like your car, for instance. If you've got a conductor, and it's just some blob of metal, you can know, first of all, the first rule of conductors in equilibrium is that if there's a whole bunch of charge, then, well, the interesting thing is inside the conductor, you splatter some excess charge in the conductor and the charges will move around until inside the electric field is zero, exactly zero inside the conductor. So that actually means, that actually leads us to rule number two, that actually means that all of the excess charge will sit on the outside of the conductor. And that is a very interesting situation. So let's label that with the, um, <clears throat> inside the conductor, the electric field zero, and also all charge resides on the outside. And those two things are natural results of each other. So let me give you a counter example. Here we go, let's, let's go blue over here. Counter example says that we've got some conductor and we've got some negative charge here and we've also got a negative charge here and a negative charge here. So these negative charges over here don't have much to do with these negative charges on the inside. But they, oh, they look like eyebrows, what fun. These negative charges here will repel each other. In fact, this negative charge will be repelled so that it feels a force to the left and this negative charge will feel a force to the right. And in fact, they will each try to get outside of the conductor. In fact, ending up ultimately on the outside of the conductor. And so no charges no unbalanced charge. Of course there are positive charges and negative charges because all things that we manipulate are made up of protons and electrons and well, there are probably some neutrons in there too, but everything's got protons and electrons in it also. So there are positive and negative charges in here, but there is no net charge. All the net charge, if there is a net charge on the conductor, will reside on the outside of it. And that's because if you've got a couple charges on the inside, they will repel each other and they will move. Of course, if it's positive charges, it's not like the positive charges are going to repel each other and move. It's like an electron from the outside is going to say, ooh, I see an unmatched positive. Let me draw you a picture of that. So we've got to really visualize this. If there's a, um, if there's a positive charge here, and a positive charge here, and there's some, um, what do you want, some other positive charges here? We'll spread some positive charges. And this is again a counter example. This is not in equilibrium, but um, I'll put a couple there for fun. We'll see why in a moment. This guy will definitely feel a force that way, and this guy will feel a force that way, but what's actually going to happen is an electron from over here, an electron from over here, there are still electrons over here, not enough way short of enough, because it's a net positive on the outside, but an electron right here feels a force this direction. 
this electron wants to go there because it sees an unmatched positive charge, an unbalanced positive charge right there. And similarly, an electron over here wants to go that direction, and it will let's say, fill the hole, right? Or balance that positive charge net right there so that inside there will be no net charge. Again, as I said, Merry Christmas. Inside, the electric field is zero and all charges reside on the outside. What fun with green conductors and red positive charges. <clears throat> the next rule, this is rule three for those of you who have been keeping track. We did one and two in one fell swoop. Rule three for charges in equilibrium is that the electric field, it's much like a white person's hair. You get a, a, the head of a white person and the white person's like here, right? And they've got a face over here and I'm no good at faces and a mouth and big pointy teeth and yeah, probably a neck too. So the white person is here and the white person has hair coming out of the white person's head. What you notice about white people if you get really close to them is that the hair coming out of their head is always at a right angle to their head head. But then that white person can grow their hair really long, let's say, and uh, dye it uh, blue and then comb it back. But there's always hair coming straight out of the white person's head. You can comb it back though. And electric fields around conductors are just like that. So the electric field right next to a conductor is always normal to the surface of the conductor. So I'll give you a conductor and I'll tell you based on rules number one and two that all charge resides on the outside of the conductor. So I'll put some over here and there's a little bit over here and a slightly higher density here and here they are just all charges hanging out right there. And the cool thing is <clears throat> that it's actually as a result of rules number one and two that the electric field has to point exactly out. So the electric field goes like that there and 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 that there. And that there. Oh, interesting. And that there and that there and that there. And it's my point is it's going directly out at all times. Outside of this immediate region, the electric field could be changed for some weird reason. Like we could put a uh, we could put a thing over here that's very negative. And then a lot of these electric field lines would then curve to go over and meet up with these negative charges. But immediately next to the surface the electric field is always going to be pointing normal to the surface. All right, and rule number four. This is the hardest to explain and I don't have an excellent explanation. I have a mediocre explanation for this one. If I have maybe a teardrop shape conductor, then charge accumulates, or maybe it's the head of a bird, charge accumulates at pointy bits. Let's see if we can understand why that might be the case. I'm gonna get some negative charge on this sucker. So we've got some negative charges out here and we've got a couple in here, but we've got lots residing on that pointy bit. Now, you know that negative charges don't like each other and so this feels problematic. But what I'm arguing is based on rule number three, the white person hair rule, you've got normal, electric fields, electric fields normal to the surface. And the cool thing is about a point, the direction of normal changes really dramatically in a short distance. So here's the normal direction right there and then the normal direction 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 and the normal direction. So the normal direction is changing dramatically here, but over here, the normal direction is not changing very much. So in order to keep the electric field like a white person's hair, you need to have lots of charges here on the point enforcing the fact that the electric field is normal to the surface. 
That's one explanation. See if you can find another one on the internet because maybe that's not satisfactory to you. But it is a fantastic fact of nature that electric fields like to accumulate at a point. And so in an introductory physics class to explain it, uh, to explain it better is beyond me. I would love to find someone with a better explanation though. This has lots of cool consequences, like if you build a church and it's really tall, it's taller than these other houses, right? There's this interesting effect where like in the Middle Ages, the funny thing was the churches would always get hit by lightning and that doesn't feel right from a, uh, from a religious perspective. You're like, what? Church? Lightning? Okay. Because they thought that lightning was a direct uh, anger of God and whatnot. So you get, uh, <coughs> you get this church and it keeps getting struck by lightning. And that is simply because the church is standing up there saying, strike me with lightning, not those other lower things, right? Lightning is lazy. Nature's lazy. Heck. So what you've got is you've got lightning attracted to the top peak there. But what you can do what you can do is establish a conductor. What are my conductors? Green. If you put a conductor up here, it's just a little wire and it goes into the earth and you drive a rod. Like seriously, outside of my house, I have two copper rods that are about three meters long and they've just been hammered into the earth. And then I've got a wire connected to it and it goes into my house to be the ground conductor for my house. So then up here, you put a little spike and it is actually important that it be spiky because at this spike, charge will accumulate. And then, uh, uh, well, you can look at it on other websites. I don't plan to go through it right here. But the idea is that uh, since you've got a point with really, really, really high concentration of charge, charge from the ground will move up there. Chances are, let's see, we've got, heck, oh gosh, I do feel like going into it. You've got a cloud and there are negative charges on the bottom of the cloud. And that is a fantastically complicated thing that happens. And I'd love you to look up why that happens. But maybe it's just because the electrons are heavy. And so extra electrons tend to hang down at the bottom of the cloud. So you got a cloud during a storm and it's negative right here. And that means that the ground will polarize. So you'll have a whole bunch of um, positive charges that are up at the top of things because the uh, negative charges that were there have moved away. And those negative charges in the ground, because the ground's neutral, right? Those negative charges have moved way down into the ground. So then you've got these positive charges here way up at the top of the steeple. And the, on top of the steeple, you're probably going to have, uh, what do you want? Oh, a lightning rod, right? That lightning rod's going to have an enormous concentration of positive charges. But the cool thing is that air polarizes. So you come up here with a, a little molecule of water in air, and it's got a positive side and a negative side and you can bet that the negative side the negative side of that water molecule will be more attracted to the um, lightning rod than the positive side is repelled from it because there's a um, well I guess you'd say there's a diverging electric field it's not a uniform electric field but the electric field is really strong near the steeple and it's really weak far away from the steeple so this thing which we call a dipole this is a dipole a polarized molecule is attracted then to that and it will actually go over here and bump into the steeple and grab some of the positive charge or I guess we should probably look at it as dropping off an electron and then the water floats off away and the water is positive so you've got this positive charge leaking off into the atmosphere and rather than actually catching lightning the primary function of a lightning rod is to prevent lightning because as the water in the air, guess what? Oftentimes when it's about to rain, it's rather wet in the air. So there's a lot of water and it's all being drawn when it's neutral, it's being drawn to the uh, lightning rod and it grabs charge and floats away. So it is leaking, the lightning rod is leaking the positive charge of the ground off away. And maybe those suckers would even go up here and prevent lightning. So that's cool.